timer. I know the rain is loud. Can everyone hear me? Do you guys want to come closer? Is the sound coming right? It's tough. <laughs> the higher you climb, the harder the fall. And I should know this, because I was the best. I'm not joking. I'm not top 10, not top 100. I was the best programmer in the country when I started my career. Number one place is the National Olympia, the National Informatics Olympia. That is where I started my career. And I maintained myself within the top throughout the entire middle school and high school. And that went along with a lot of other successes in my life, which led me to look for a university abroad. I wanted to study somewhere other than in Toulouse, and I went for Denmark, to a very small campus of the high and mighty Old War University where I found a good mix of courses that I was interested in, but more importantly, the promise of a practical education. Now, little did I know what practical education meant at that time, was that things, you have courses, they do the regular courses, but they give you half of the credits of the university on project. That is to say, in each semester at the university, you're getting half your points on making a project from top to bottom executing the project, running, doing analysis on it, and self-evaluation for that whole project. You're basically writing one dissertation every semester. That was an incredibly hard thing to do, an incredibly challenging aspect. But what was more interesting is that you had to do this as a team. You were split into groups of four to five, four to six people, and you did this under the guise of a mentor, one or two mentors, or and projects went well overall. It was a good start. You keep going left and right. Until later in the later in the studies, when we took a more a slightly more ambitious project that took a full year. This project went under the guise of a of the head of the department you know, named Tony. Tony was an old bald guy, and he was whenever you talked to him, he went into very weird and strange stories. Like, if your question was, I want to know what 2 plus 2 is, 4 would be the answer and you'd get him within his replies. But you'd also get the history of 4, what its use in medicine and music is, and how it helps him with disabled children. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not joking, he was interested in all of those aspects, and you'd get into any discussion about those with any topic that's brought. And for this particular talk, for this particular project, after a full year of development, started to run into some problems with the team. It was arguments kept going left and right. And the project was more hypothetical. We had a very low fidelity prototype. And it turned out that most of our stuff was inconclusive. <coughs> we didn't have good results or good questions to answer or to ask in front of the audience. And we went to the exam still hopeful that we did not. Especially I did. As I, the entire implementation was almost the implementation was almost entirely my part. I'd done more than my fair share of work at everything else in the project, and I knew it top to bottom, like the back of my hand. When we go into the exam room, and we get shut down by Tony. He comes in and tells you have to remake this thing for the next three months over the summer. Now, failing a project is a little bit different than failing an exam. If you fail an exam, you go, you pick up the book, you pick the study, and one month later you go. People intentionally fail exams at home so they have more time to study for them. This doesn't really work for a team project. You have to go in with all those people that came in almost crying, although all of them hiding that, and somehow find the strength to work on the thing again. I remember some of those were my flatmates, and I remember moments when I was getting out of, getting up in the morning going downstairs, getting into the kitchen, seeing a stack of papers from last night, not seeing, not saluting any of my colleagues who were there, lost in their room, coming back somehow trying to find a way to work on this project. And for the first month of those three, none of us could actually talk and manage to do anything on it. The last two months, we started talking, discussions came in, it was hard arguments, difficult challenges to get people on the same page. Until towards the end, our page count started dropping, everything became a little more clear. We knew it wasn't a great project, we didn't have the data for a great project, but we went back <coughs> into the exam room hoping that we'd get, we would get something out of it. It 
took a long time to do that. It was hard, it was painful, but somehow we managed to discuss it. And we go into the exam room, and none of us are confident. We're all down at the bottom, looking at Tony, answering questions, and it was a very long, arduous two hours, going back and forth, having no idea if what we're saying is correct. Until Tony eventually gives us, yes, it's good to go, you, you, you take a passing grade, this is what you got, congratulations. Now, we were not celebrating at that point. We were just relieved. We finally managed to get past this hurdle. Until Tony asked me into his office. And he said, Katarin, you guys were really, really close to passing. It was my subjective choice to crush you down, to, to fail you, and to put you down. On a good day, I might have let you pass. But that time, you had to fail. It was a, this was a long one hour conversation. We discussed how we fell, how everything went, and how, what, what it all meant for each of us. And he did this for every person in the team. I was not angry at him for doing that. Not at all. Respectful as best as I could. And I finally understood what the entire practical part of that university, university meant to talk to you. It was supposed to tell me that what, whatever I thought that I was a star player, that I knew everything, that I was the best, you win and fail projects as a team, depending on how you work with them and how you manage to get the project itself to win. It doesn't matter who was out there in the front, who was the star player. And I've heard that before. You hear that in the university come day in, day out, but I could not realize it from the sky-high castle where I was. I had to fall, and it had to be a good mentor to push me down and get me through that. Thank mm -hmm. you. 